Well, this week we're doing a little mooch docking. If you don't know what mooch docking is, that's where we take our RV, we park it on somebody else's property, and they let us stay and hang out and use their amenities for free, which is really cool. We've only done this one other time. We did this at the Brazen Brits Farm in Virginia a couple years back, and it worked out really good. And the reason that it worked out really good is because we followed some rules of etiquette. When you're mooch docking, just like a campground, it's not without rules. So today we're going to show you how to mooch dock without pissing off your hosts. The last time we mooch docked was out with the Brazen Brits mm -hmm. on their farm in Virginia. That's fun. And we said if we ever did it again, we wanted to try something new, mm -hmm. something different, something exciting. So now we're mooch docking with the Brazen Brits in Florida. Stepped way outside the box. Yeah. But it's just kind of getting back into it and, and, and making sure that we have the etiquette game down yes. before we go pissing anybody off. Exactly. So I brought in the etiquette expert. She's the campground etiquette expert. Mm -hmm. But how much do you know about mooch docking? <laughs> Very little. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of things carry over. It does. So it's not that difficult to navigate. But specific to mooch docking, mm -hmm. what's the most important thing when you are the guest? When you're the guest, don't self-invite. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. Don't, don't assume you're welcome to just... <laughs> come and stay we've heard stories about this and yeah. and so the way that this one came about it just came up in conversation we knew we were gonna be in Florida we knew they lived in Florida yeah we said oh well we'll have to fill a week in between stays we'll we'll have to come up with something and now I was like you can stay here okay I was like okay you sure <laughs> can't take it back <laughs> <laughs> Next is set up where your host wants you to set up. They know their property better than you. They know their homeowners association rules. They know how their layout is. They know where their power supply is, their water supply, their sewer, if they have it. So they know exactly where your rig needs to go. And chances are, if they're hosting you, they probably hosted someone else in the past. And they probably know the best way to get in, the best direction to come in, how to back in, or pull through if you're lucky enough to get a host that has an option for you to be able to pull through. I had to back up all this, this whole driveway, but um, Lawrence knew exactly where the driveway sloped, where I could potentially bottom out, the angle I needed to come at, and exactly where I needed to go set up to get my power and my water. So make sure that you are following your host's guidelines for where to set up. How long are we staying here for? As long as we want. Sounds legit. <laughs> Don't do that. No. <laughs> yeah. You definitely want to have clearly defined arrival and departure dates. Absolutely. Because you want your host to have an expectation of when you're going to be there, when you're going to be leaving. You don't want them sitting in their house going, when are these people they're leaving? Leave. Yeah. <laughs> they're just sitting here stealing all of our electricity, <laughs> stealing all of our water, water, and we can't get them to leave. <laughs> well, yeah, because they have things they have to do too. So you can't just Hang camp out. out as long as you want. <laughs> But it's a camp out. No, it's not. <laughs> so we're here for one week. We knew that we could last one week on our black tank. Yep. And we got power and water. So a week yeah. was comfortable for us. A week was comfortable for them. Works out for everybody. That's right. And it's clearly defined. They know what day we're getting here. And they know exactly when we're leaving. Yeah. So something for them to look forward to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just assume that you can just walk around somebody else's property wherever you want, willy-nilly, like you own the place. You are currently being recorded. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that or not, but it said, hello, you are currently being recorded. I know, I'm on YouTube. There's a few other things that you gotta talk about before you actually show up and start the mooch docking process. Okay. Because otherwise, it's probably not gonna go very smoothly. Yeah, it's true. So some of those things are like just minor expectations. Mm -hmm. Like, what is it going to be? Are, are we hanging out 24 seven? Yeah. Like you're going to have to see my face all day, every day. And some people, there's a miscommunication between like, okay, am I parking my rig here and living in your house? True. In the guest room? Yeah. Or am I living in my house? And your host might be working. Yeah. During the week. Or, you know, some of these like mooch dockers welcome. Yeah. Your host might not even be home. True. So you have to kind of clearly define some of these expectations before you show before you up. Before you arrive, yes. If you feel like hanging out 
24-7 is something you have to do and you have to be around somebody all the time, mooch docking might not be for you. Stop being so clingy. Another big one is meals. Like, are we eating together every day? Yeah. You or, got, you, it's stuff you got to talk about. Yeah. Or what are we doing? Yeah. Or are we every meal together? Just certain meals? Are we going to go out? Are you cooking at your house? Or am I cooking in my rig? Am I yeah. bringing some stuff over so we can eat together? We alternate, take turns. Or are we just on our own yeah. the whole time? Yeah. You got to talk about this stuff. <laughs> Otherwise, you're sitting in your rig and you're going, I wonder what they want us to do. And they're sitting in their house going, I wonder what they want us to do. <laughs> It's true. And you're just sitting in your own spaces but going, I don't know knows. what to do with my hands. <laughs> as much as we don't like them, there has to be rules. There has to There be. has to be rules, Leslie. Yeah. You can't just do whatever you want. Oh, I know. <laughs> I don't think you know. <laughs> so what we're talking about here is your host will probably have some rules. You got to lay down ground rules. If I was the host, I would want to have rules. Oh, I, w I know I'd have rules. <laughs> so I just assume that most hosts will have rules. And yeah. what I'm talking about is like, if they live on a big piece of property with some land, maybe they'll let you dump your gray. Yes. On their property. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. But you need to figure it out. You don't want to just go dumping your stuff. You can't. And you haven't it. talked about no, it yet. Absolutely not. Um, exterior lighting. Yeah. Keeping your lights, lights on at on night. Me. Noise is a big deal. Yes. The house is right there. It is. And so are neighbors. Then other neighbors over here. So their house is really, really close. So maybe you're a night owl and they're not. Exactly. Or maybe they're a night owl oh, and we're not. not. <laughs> so the expectation on that end too is if you're in the rig and you know they're night owls and you say, you know, we really try to go to bed around 11 or 12. That may give your host a hint that like, might want to keep it down. And vice yeah. versa. If the host just says, you know what, stay up as late as you want, do what you want. But just, you know, it's kind of like the quiet hours at a campground. Exactly. Just keep it quiet. Yeah. And along with that is the same kind of rules apply in campgrounds as well with pets. Yes. If you have pets and you're on someone else's property and your dog is dropping landmines. <laughs> pick them pick up. Pick them up, man. <laughs> even, if, even if they have pets and their pets go free or whatever mm -hmm. and go wherever they want, don't just assume... That your pets exactly. can do it also. Make sure you clearly define those yes. things. Yes. And another one of the big things is uh, because your mooch dock in a lot of places won't have power or water. You might have to fill your tanks and, and stuff before you get there. But if you don't have power, you got to have the generator talk. Yeah. Yes, you do. Especially if you don't have a quiet generator. <laughs> because yeah. they may have homeowner association rules. They may have quiet hours in their neighborhood mm -hmm. that are rules for the neighborhood. Yep. And it kind of depending on how close the other neighbors are. You don't yeah. want to just keep a generator running on. No, they don't want to hear that all day. No. Yeah. So you got to have those hard conversations yes. before you set up and park the rig. Mm -hmm. Or else you might find yourself departing a little earlier than planned. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the common sense part of the etiquette is always 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 leave it better than you found it or at least the same as you found it you might not be able to make it better than you found it but clean up your trash pick up your stuff make sure that you have all your belongings with you before you leave and make sure that you also thank your hosts for letting you stay that'd be a nice little gesture for you We've never hosted moose doctors obviously because we don't have a house but you guys have several times mm -hmm. and so you're like the experts on etiquette of moose talking. Yeah. Well, true. We used to be Boondockers Welcome hosts as oh, okay. well when we had the farm. And we had some not very... Uh, uh, pleasant experience. Pleasant experience. <laughs> you just say that. So we stopped doing that. But yeah, yeah. as far as mooch stocking, I think uh, everyone's generally pretty cool. You know, yeah. they're all fine. Our biggest fear is respecting our neighbors. So things like, yeah. you know, um, we, we had friends stay and their inverter died and they had to use their generator, oh, which was yeah. fine, but we do have neighbors pretty close. Yeah. And, you know, just the little things like keep the noise down, yeah. don't be a pain, <laughs> wave when you see them. They're all very yeah. nice people, so you can just wave and be polite. You don't have to, you know, be like that. So really, I think my biggest concern is, yeah. you know, as long as everyone respects our neighbors, we're happy. And probably more of an issue here 
that it was on the on farm because when we moved out with you guys before your neighbors were a little bit further away yeah, yeah. here they're like right there they're <laughs> literally right yeah. there yeah they're about 200 <laughs> yards from your from your rig yeah. it's still not like you know it's not like we're on a road and no, they're like right next other. door so yeah. it's not a big yeah. pain like our friends with the generator you yeah. know the, the house is they were on our pads obviously you're right next to the house but yeah. so there's plenty of space but yeah i think uh yeah just mm. i worry about that so have any of your neighbors ever said anything or complained about any of your guests here no nope. not yet no not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> well we'll see in the yeah. next few days day after tomorrow as soon as we roll out they'll come over and knock on the door and be like um those last assholes that you had here? <laughs> yeah, don't have them back <laughs> Uh, well, thank you guys for hosting us, letting us yeah. hang out. Are, no we worries. Are we welcome back? Okay. Uh, there's a few more days yet, but at the yeah. moment, yes. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just saying that because we're on camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around for a few seconds. We are going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans out on the road, everything you need to know is down in the description of the video. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.